I'm going to now segue to Casey to talk a little bit about uh, Australian uh, postgraduate training and and how is it like, what was the process like to even start the training and uh, was it easy to get a training position in general? Just would love some info on it. Yeah, um, so I guess starting with thinking about getting a training position and understanding that you are a, in their minds, an international medical uh, student, which means that when you do try and um, match into or get a job as an intern in Australia, it is a tiered system with categories A, B, and C. A obviously is domestic students from that same state. B would be your domestic student, but from a different state. And then C would be where you are, which is where I was, which is a international student graduating from a domestic uh, school, pardon me. Um, what that means is that you're not guaranteed a position as a intern in Australia uh, after you graduate medical school. That's very daunting and scary sounding, but the reality is, is that there is more intern positions available than there are actual graduating medical students. Um, so for myself, I, I own a house in uh, Cairns with my partner. I very much wanted to stay in Cairns. Um, so obviously I preferenced Cairns as my first choice uh, with then following that other Queensland-based uh, internship positions. Uh, the reasons for that is that Queensland definitely made a significant more um, amount of money compared to say like New South Wales. Can't quote exactly how much it was, but it was around 10, at least thousand dollars difference. Um, and as somebody who is paying back personal loans, <laughs> that, uh, that definitely weighed into it. Um, now the process is quite stressful waiting for your internship allocation. Um, so what I did was applied to lots of Queensland based locations, but I also applied interstate. And then as a group C applicant, you do have to do interviews for um, all of the places that are interested in you, which um, after the first one, you kind of get into the role of it. They all tend to ask about shortness of breath. Um, so usually one clinical question or two, and then you know, why you want to go there, what are your strengths, etc. Very similar um, interview questions that you would expect. Um, so I actually got into uh, not cans, um, and I accepted a different location. Um, but then I just held on waiting and fingers crossed. And in November of 2023, somebody made a switch and I got into cans. So I started internship early January. So during that time, yes, I had a confirmed location that I didn't want to move to because it was going to be a 28 hour drive and move and I would have had to sell my house. Um, I had that set up, but it wasn't until all the way till November. And you put in your intern uh, applications and start interviewing uh, in June. So it's a very long time to kind of sit on your hands and cross your fingers, really. Um, and then, yeah, thankfully I did get a switch, which is why I'm still in Cairns. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and it's been a wonderful experience. Um, like Kevin said, we do get probably like a pretty good amount of independence. I'm currently in the emergency department. I see all of my own patients. I do all of the procedures for it. If it's a more invasive procedure, like a, uh, I don't know, like a femoral nerve block, which I got to do, but I had a registrar who is a uh, senior to me, um, assist me and walk me through how to do it. Uh, every patient though, you, the, I guess, sorry, the nice thing about internship is that you have the safety and protection of superiors, which um, at the beginning of medical school, I did not understand 
what the difference or why we care about what postgraduate year you are. Um, but now as an intern with some responsibility, I'm very thankful and grateful to have a supervisor to run all patients by, uh, which is required as a intern. Um, just to make a note, internship has changed. I am the first year to be doing a two year internship, um, which sounds a bit intimidating and confusing as you feel like you might wanna continue on your career pathway. Um, but from my understanding and what's been informed to me is that it's one year of internship and then your second year, you do technically become a resident medical officer, which would be your PGY2, similar as before, but, uh, and you do have a title change, but you just continue to have protected teaching sessions and uh, protected supervision. Um, the, I guess the reason that they did have that change was after internship and before you do get onto a program, like Kevin said, it can sometimes be up to that five year or 10 year mark, I guess if you want to do like neurosurge or something. Um, during those times, you don't have protected teaching. So it'd have to be um, individual based. And uh, the RMOs tended to be just like the workforce, um, just in the background, just kind of going through. Um, so I guess, yeah, the point of the second year is to just help us out as junior doctors a little bit more um, while we still try and figure out where we want to go. And like I like to say, speed date the specialties which is also a major part as to why I am still in Australia and not back in Canada as I've gone from liking orthopedics to neurology to family medicine um, and everything in between. I thought two years ago I was going to be an ONG doctor. So when you don't know, it's not a bad idea to just float a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. That was actually going to be one of my questions that I asked you about the speed dating, because I love that comment you made in your bio. And in general, it's a good point to make, because uh, sometimes you don't know what you want to do off the bat. And it's really nice that you get to really see the reality of things in each of these. And uh, that's the beauty of what the Australian internship gives you, which is great.